all right, now let's now take a, a bit closer look at, at denoising ray trace shadow and, and also ray trace shadow in general. First, why do we even bother about using ray tracing to render shadows? And the biggest uh, reason is definitely that ray tracing can give you better visual quality for a large area like soft shadows. You can just produce physically correct, accurate um, penumbras even for really large area light source, which is not possible with shadow map based techniques. And the reason is that shadow map always use uh, you know, projection and non-stochastic rasterization. So the resulted shadows in the shadow map will be always a hard shadow, assuming that you only use one shadow map. And so blurring a hard shadow into a soft shadow won't get you very far because when your light source is large enough, they're actually quite different. And the other really common solution is, is capsule shadows. That's pretty common for character shadows. And since, since comparing with that, we're actually tracing rays against the actual geometry. So we should have much finer geometry details than capsule shadows. And also we support much more geom geometrically complicated occluder as well. And unlike distant field shadows, we support occluders with skin rigid body motion. And finally, with analytical area light shading being so popular nowadays, ray traced area light shadows can definitely be combined with those techniques to achieve really high quality area light shading in games. And in the content creation productivity side, I think nobody likes shadow map. Tuning it to work with, to robustly is always a, is always time consuming task. And you have to constantly fight the fact that they have different, the shadow map sampling rate is mismatching from the raster sampling rate. So maybe soon we can get rid of it. All right. More images, so this is the input to our denoiser, and then this is the filter, filter result. And then that's, that's the ground truth rendered with a lot of rays per pixel. I don't know, I don't have the exact number, but they're pretty converged. So if I, if I flip back and forth, you can see that the ground truth still pre preserve higher frequency details better. So that's why I said we, we only want to get perceptually close to the ground truth, but to, re to get really close to the ground truth at one sample per pixel is really challenging. And finally, we have the comparison with shadow mapping. All right, so with that aside, let's run the shadow stage demo that we, ha we have prepared. All shadow rays are using one ray per pixel. I hope that you like the demo and the music. And uh, now that you've seen this denoising in action, here is a brief overview of how it works. 
So first of all, the, the equation for rendering direct lighting can be written as a product between the cosine term, the, the BRDF, and then the direct radiance LD by sampling the area light source. So directly reconstructing this integrand can be quite tricky since uh, a really bright sample caused by a really strong, uh, strong direct lighting sample can be easily filtered into a really bright blob uh, if you're not careful. And thankfully, thankfully there are just many existing algorithms out there which compute the direct lighting shading without the visibility term analytically. And most engine actually has built-in solution for analyt analytical shading of light sources with finite area. So, so here we can simply separate the whole integrand into the product of two, uh, two integrals and compute the shading integral uh, with analytical shading, which won't have any noise, and only denoise the visibility part, which is conveniently in the range of zero and one. So that uh, is really friendlier to the denoiser. So for the actual denoising, we use a lot of the auxiliary, auxiliary information from the G-buffer as well as from the scene context to derive an optimal filter footprint for each pixel. The needed information, including, including the ray hit distance, the scene depth, the world normal, the light source sizes and directions. Uh, and, the rec uh, and actually, we have three different denoisers for the three type of light source that you saw earlier, which are directional light, spherical light, and rectangular light source, each with different ways to estimate the filter footprint just so that we can get to optimal filter uh, result to, to very close to ground truth. And because the fact that the, the denoiser actually need input from the light source, so we, have, we actually need, we have to apply the denoising for each light source separately, which is uh, you know, suboptimal for performance since uh, that your performance is gonna scale linearly with the number of light source that you have, but we just we achieved much better result by doing denoising this way, comparing with denoising all the light source together, but that's maybe there's some filter work. <laughs> 